Please let me go to hell. I'm about to go out, but I had to make this video before I leave. Also, y'all never really get to see my body. Um, yeah, I'm fine as fuck, if you didn't already know. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know why Christians have this mindset of, I have to save everyone. Let us go to hell. Let let us burn. What, what, why are you so gung-ho on doing this to the point to where you feel the need to push it on people, hurt people, kill people, just because you have to learn about God. I don't fucking care just stop y'all always trying to convert a motherfucker doesn't it say in your religious text to leave people alone if they don't want to listen to you did y'all miss that part if hell is where i'm destined to go let me go just just let me go because let me tell you something this shit this earth shit yeah this is hell I can deal with anything if I can deal with this. And I've said this before, if hell is the place where all of the free thinkers are, the people that question shit, the people that don't just blindly follow things, send me to hell. That's where I wanna go. Let me go, please. Your religion is dying and you're trying to fix that by converting every single person that you see. You ain't gotta save everybody, Susan. Let them go, let, let them go. The way I see it, either I'm right and none of this shit is real, I'm wrong and there's a completely other God that none of us have been talking about, or I'm wrong and this Christian God has actually been sitting here watching these atrocities happen without doing anything to stop them and sending people to hell who complain about it. So I'll go to hell happily and I might spit in his fucking face if I see his ass. If he has the audacity to be real, I have some fucking words for him. Leukemia, my guy? Like, really? Homelessness, starvation, murder, you just had to create all those things? Fuck you. Go ahead and send my ass on to hell because you're not gonna get one lick of peace if I am in heaven with you. I'm asking questions every single day for the rest of eternity, bitch, and you better have some motherfucking answers for me. He better not be real. I'll tell you that much. Proverbs 9 and 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. All praise to the Most High. Yahweh by Shem Yahushai by Shem Double honor to the apostles and elders. A great millstone for teaching his truth that's gone all around the earth. Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. All right. This is your brother, Atajwan Bayoff, and we're back at it with another quick lesson. All right. And this is going to be a response, okay, to Salakia, the elder Manasseh Zakba's video here. All right. And a response. Okay, a response of a response, okay, in this case, to please let me go to hell, right? You see it right there. And that's the elders page right there, GMS South Carolina 08. All right, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the elders page, all right? But anyway, let's get back over here. And we'll read uh, Proverbs 9 and 13 again. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. We saw the video clip, Salakia, okay? And we looked at a clamorous woman, right? And every week, something is, is coming out on these women, right? These, these, these Negro women, right, who cannot keep their mouths shut. So let's get the definition of clamorous. Clamorous means super loud and obnoxious crying out, right? And was she not obnoxious? Okay, in her uh, video short, okay, running her mouth, right, talking bad about the Most High, okay, and where she doesn't know the Lord, but just in her mind, uh, she thinks she's doing something, okay. Uh, let's finish the definition. If you find yourself in the midst of pack of clamorous groupies going nuts over celebrity sightings you need to put your earplugs in whatever uh, but the whole point meaning that she's this particular woman is very very loud obnoxious rude insulting brutish wicked okay and knows nothing all right and i'm not gonna be long just just a quick response to it you know as all the other brothers have touched on it okay and I'm just going to get a handful of scriptures and that'll be that, all right? Because this woman absolutely knows not what she's talking about. And every word that you speak in your mind because she's actually trying to speak against, you know, the most high of the, of the Bible, okay? 
This is Matthew 25, 35. Let's we'll start right there. It reads, a good man out of the, the good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things, right, out of a man's mind. Okay, and so all that, <laughs> all that stuff she spewed out came out of her mind. Okay, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringing forth evil things. And what she said was evil. Verse 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Okay, so even with her running her mouth the way that she did, okay, and really not knowing the Lord, but she still, she still in her mind spoke wickedness out of her mouth. Okay, and she's going to have to give an account for that day. All right, or in that day, Salakia. All right. This is uh, Proverbs 12 and 4. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh a shame is as rottenness in his bones. Okay, and that young woman is not virtuous. Okay, uh, because as we see, these women, especially these younger women today, okay, are, are not being brought up. They're not being trained to be wives. Okay, they're being trained to be harlots and whores. Okay, they're being trained to be independent and all these other things. All right, last and least is being a, a loving, caring wife. And, and that young woman is, is no man's wife, as, as it were, okay? Um, because you can tell she doesn't know how to shut her mouth, all right? A man will have nothing but trouble with that, okay? Being a clamorous woman and knowing nothing. Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. Okay, of course, this is talking about the leaders, okay, the northern kingdom and so forth, uh, really all of Israel, all right? But when you think about it in this day, all right, uh, you have women who are trying to be like men, all right? And, and one thing this you can say about this social media age, man, is you have more women who are just uh, just blurting out everything that comes to their mind. It, it, this social media has done nothing but get, giving all these women, if, if they got a phone, they're going to do something stupid with it, all right? They're going to blurt out something stupid and put it out there for everybody to see, okay? And have no knowledge, all right? go over to uh, Proverbs 18 and 22. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord Jehovah. Alright? And this woman is again <laughs> lacking in the wife department. Okay? She will most likely never be a loving, caring wife all right, because they've had, what, too much liberty to get abroad, too much time, all right, on their hands to come up with ridiculous things to say, all right, and ultimately, she's going to, she's going to end up paying for that. Now, she mentions, <laughs> as, as the video says, you know, just let them go to hell. Well, you know, we've, we've tackled this many, many times, okay. And um, there's no such place in the bottom of the earth. All right. Let's go over here to Psalms uh, just real quick. Psalms 9 and 14. And you can go almost, almost pick uh, uh, any verse that you like, all right, that contains the, the word hell in it. And it's going to tell you what the definition of it is. But just for laughs and giggles, Let's just go ahead and go into it just a little bit, all right? This is Psalms 9 and 13, and it reads, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my trouble, which I have suffered of them that hate me. 
thou that lifted me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his hands. Haggai say, uh, say lie. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget the most high. Now let's go into this real quick. Into hell, and it says here in the Hebrew, what? Sha. Well, it's a Y in there. Shawal. Okay, but it's Sha'al, all right? Let's go into the Strong's definition. It says, uh, and you know, they, they be going off a lot, but here you see it. It says grave, hell, pit, and that's what it is, okay? Sha'al, all right? Here, up here, it says, what well, Hades or the world of the dead includes accessories and, and inmates, but it says, what, hyphen, grave, hell, pit, right? The world of the dead is the pit. You see? You, nowhere in there does, it, does the definition tell you anything about any fire and burning, okay? It's just underground, the pit, all right? Here, uh, you see, uh, they're going off right here. It says, wicked sent there for punishment. That's that's not the case. Okay. All right. Place of no return. Well, yeah, if you're in the grave, that's a place of no return. Okay. Abode of the dead. If you're in the grave, okay, that's what it's referring to. It's talking about being in the ground, being, being dead, in a dead state. And even to another degree of being in a low state, okay? But that's what it is, a shawl. And like I said, you don't see nothing in there that says burning fire forever and ever and ever and ever. You don't see that. It's just, it's just being in the pit, being in the grave, all right? Or again, condition-wise on the earth in a low state, okay? So anyway, just want to touch on that just a little bit. Like I said, to give my response to it, all right, just real quick, you know, these women, particularly you Negro women out there, you need to shut your beat, okay? Just just be quiet already, all right? Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's see if we can get one more schlock in. Um, I'm going to see if I can get to it. I think it's Ecclesiasticus, and there's a lot in that uh, chapter. I think it's 20, 25 or 26, one or the other. We'll check it, all right? Shalaki. 25, and what, let's go down. Eh, let's just start at 1 and see. Go to um, verse 16. Okay, it says, uh, I'd rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. Verse 17, the wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkness her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit, up, sit among his neighbors and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Yeah, because a, a woman who's wicked, you know, um, brings sorrow to a man's heart, you know. Like I said, that young woman there, she, she's all gap, all all mouth, just, just gabbing her mouth away, okay, proud, you see. Um... 
that's good enough. I mean, we go over these scriptures all the time. We, we'll stop right there. You get the point. Like I say, other brothers have gone into it as well. Um, we saw that little short there, okay? And uh, just another example, right, of the Negro woman running her mouth and being clamorous, all right? So we ended right there, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rakakwadash, and double honor to the apostles and elders, great millstone. Shalom to the hopeful elect. We'll see you all again real soon with another lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.